everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on my 2020 Alumacraft Trophy 205 powered by Yamaha. I picked up this boat earlier this summer from the folks at Advanced Marine Lake Bellwood and I just wanted to give them a huge thank you. It has been a very strange year and I had a lot of particulars about this boat and everyone I dealt with there was very accommodating. So awesome people there, highly recommended. Um, today I've got everything out of the boat because I'm actually going to be listing it for sale at the end of the season, which for me is sometime in December, depending on the weather. Um, but I'm already planning my boat for 2021. So I've taken everything out to get photos um, for the sale listing. And I figured it was a great time to do the walkthrough as well. I also wanted to get the chance to run the boat a bunch before I did this walkthrough so I could tell you guys what I love about it. I've been partnered with Illumicraft for the past eight years and over these eight years I've had the chance to try a variety of different boat models and you know I do realize that everyone has a different adventure, a different style of fishing in mind. Um, I've had the chance to run the Waterfowler, the Classic, the Escape, the Pro, the T-Pro, the Competitor and the Trophy 205 here behind me. This is my biggest boat yet. But I do a wide variety of fishing types, everything from panfish, bass, walleye, you know, smaller lakes, big water, and Great Lakes fishing. I'm fishing on my own, fishing with family, and taking clients out. So this model has been really, really great for me. And I'm going to dig more into all the features on why I selected it. This boat is 20 feet, 8 inches long with a 98 inch beam and it features Illumicraft's 2XB hull. Now, if you're not familiar with this hull system, um, basically what it is, rather than taking multiple pieces of aluminum and welding them together, Illumicraft has taken two full sheets of aluminum from bow to stern on the boat and bonded them together using aircraft grade rivets. Um, this just means a much stronger hull. Um, it's gonna provide a smoother ride uh, with less vibration and a lot quieter as well. One of the main reasons I went with this particular model, it is a deep V style boat. As well, it has nice and high gunnels, so I feel comfortable out on big water, in chop, and it's also a very dry ride thanks to Illumicraft's gull wing design. And then you've got the full length spray rails, one on each side of the boat. So when I'm out there running around, it's gonna disperse that spray away from the boat, keeping me nice and dry. All right, we've talked about the outside of the boat. Now we're gonna jump in and go over the features and the storage. Alrighty, starting with storage up in the bow here, there is a small storage compartment up on the nose of the boat here. And I personally use this one for wiring and electronics, but you could put, you know, tackle and stuff in there if you wanted to. Then, there are three storage compartments here up in the bow. One of them is lockable. So there's tons of space up here. You know, I put my life jackets, my trolling motor pedal when I'm not using it. That one I load up with tackle. And then I've also got an 18 gallon live well up at the front here. The trophy model comes standard with rails on the bow gunnels. Optionally, there are cushions along the sides of the gunnels and on the consoles as well. These are nice if you want to lean against while you're fishing or if you want to take a seat and uh, rest your back against it. There is a large center rod locker up front here and this lid has an L-shaped design which makes it nice and easy to get rods in and out of. There are eight rod tubes on the bottom row. It can accommodate rods up to seven foot six and on the top row, it can accommodate up to eight foot rods. I personally found that by putting rod gloves on my rods, I can fit two or even three rods in a tube. And when I'm stacking them up like that, I also use reel covers as well so that my reels aren't getting scratched and bumping up against each other. This boat is equipped to accommodate up to three 12 volt batteries for the trolling motor. Two are accessed underneath the rod locker. And then there's another one up here in the cockpit area as well. I'm currently running a 36 volt system and I've got three group 31 batteries. The front navigation light is also stored up front here in the rod locker. As for the captain's seat, I've got my Yamaha digital gauges here. 
I've got the stereo package. There are two speakers up in the bow and two in the cockpit as well. I've got my accessory panel on the right here as well as my throttle. And then underneath the console, I've got a drawer here. Uh, and this is where I like to keep all my safety equipment. Above the drawer, there's also a little cubby, um, so I also put additional items up there as well. Below the throttle, there is a tray with four recessed slots. There are two built-in cup holders with drains. Now over to the passenger side console. Um, this is a huge dash. There's a molded in tray here, space here as well. There's a cup holder with a drain, uh, cell phone storage here. And my favorite part is this huge glove box. I've got my trolling motor remote in there, extra fuses, an extra plug just in case. And to be honest, tons of junk ends up in there, but there's lots of space. And then underneath, we've got a drawer just like on the captain's side. Uh, I like these nice big drawers. And then up top, there's a cubby uh, with lots of space for extra equipment. This boat is rated for nine passengers or 1,345 pounds. It comes standard with the four pedestal seats. Additionally, there are two jump seats at the back. Uh, these are nice because when you're not using them, you can just snap them down and out of the way. Uh, there's an additional pedestal at the front, sorry, at the front and the rear of the boat so you can move the seats around as well. There is an additional rod locker on the port side gunnel here. Um, and this has five rod tubes inside. And again, I will double it up uh, by using a rod glove. Uh, this is a nice big rod locker. And then on the starboard side, there is another compartment here. Um, this I use for extra life jackets. I've got my rear nav light in here. And also this boat came equipped with a ski pole attachment and I store that in there as well. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, a number of these storage compartments are also lockable. My boating season goes from April to December. So one option that I decided to go with was the Bimini top. And what's ni another nice option here is having this Bimini cover. So this just keeps the bimini out of the way and prevents it from being stepped on. Underneath the starboard jump seat at the back is another 18 gallon live well. In the center here, there is a hatch uh, with access to the bilge area. And then under the other jump seat, um, we've got access to the house batteries and I've got two group 24 batteries wired in parallel. Alrighty, so now we are at the business end of the boat and uh, I have been running Yamaha outboards for the past eight years, and I have complete confidence in the performance and reliability of these motors. Uh, new for 2020 to the Alumacraft Trophy 205 was the maximum horsepower rating of the 300 horse. I decided to run with it. You're never gonna regret maxing out your horsepower. It's gonna give you the best performance out of your boat. Um, personally, I'm getting out on big water, I'm doing long runs, having multiple passengers on board, and uh, it's just gonna give me the best ride. So if you can, I'd highly suggest maxing it out. This boat flies with the 300 horse on the back. At wide open throttle, my top speed has been just over 57 miles per hour. I am absolutely loving this engine. Behind me here, I also have a 9.9 .9 horse kicker. Uh, I do a lot of trolling. So I've got the kicker on the back here and an electric trolling motor on the front. It is not ideal to run your main engine at low RPMs for long periods of time. So I got the kicker specifically because I do a ton of trolling. Uh, this is gonna propel the boat and then I use the electric trolling motor at the front to steer the boat. And with these two motors, it just gives me better boat control. So if you're not familiar, you might be wondering what the heck this contraption is on the transom. So I'm gonna drop it down and show you here. So this is the power pole blade shallow water anchor. Um, I went with the 10 foot model. So what this allows me to do is uh, with the press of a button, whether on the key fob or a foot switch, I can drop this anchor down to bottom and it's gonna hold my boat in place. So this comes in handy when I'm out fishing and I want to avoid drifting up onto a spot or say I'm netting a fish, helping in a client. Um, I also use it when I'm launching and loading the boat. So I'll, you know, let my boat float off the trailer, press the button, anchor down, 
tie onto the front of the dock and I'll go park my truck and then come back, jump in and, and head off. So this comes in handy for tons of reasons. Um, another feature that I added or another accessory I should say, um, I just added this, so I haven't actually used it yet, um, but this is the power pull drift paddle. Uh, so what this is going to come in handy for is when I'm trolling or you know drifting, whether it's windy conditions or in current, um, I'm going to be able to flip this paddle around to different positions and slow my speed. And also it's going to help with boat control as well. Another cool product that I'm running on the boat this year is the Power Pull Charge Power Management System. So not only is this a charger that I'm going to plug in at the end of the day to charge all five of my batteries, uh, it has other functions as well. So um, when I'm running my outboard, I can top up my trolling motor batteries throughout the day. There's also an emergency feature. So if for some reason I run my cranking battery down, I can use the power from my trolling motor batteries to top up the cranking battery, which is gonna help me get home safe. PowerPool offers a very handy app called Sea Monster, and this connects to a variety of their products via Bluetooth. So I can log into this and I can access my my charge power management system. I can see where my batteries are at. I can change the charging priority if I need to. I can access that emergency mode. So if I need to boost my cranking battery, I can do that through the app. I can also control my shallow water anchor um, and I can even adjust the deployment speed on the anchor. Okay, so now for the electronics. I made the switch to Garmin this year and I could not be happier. The technology is absolutely incredible. So I've got two units on the boat. I've got the GPS map 8410 XSV, one at the console, one at the bow. Um, with having the two outboards on the back and that obstruction from the lower units, I decided to put in a dedicated left and right side imaging transducer. So these are the GT30s. My third transducer on the transom is the GT15. Uh, this is used for 2D traditional chirp, and it also helps me to get a better reading at high speeds. So as I mentioned up front on the bow here, I'm running the GPS map 8410 XSV, and I decided to go with the Garmin Panoptic Live Scope. It is absolutely insane. So I've got the GLS10 black box, as well as the perspective mount on my trolling motor. So the live scope is crazy. You've got a real time live view, whether it's beneath or in front of your boat. There are three modes. There's the forward, down and perspective mode. And this has been a real eye opener for me. And it has helped me to catch a lot more fish this year. As for the electric trolling motor on the bow, I'm running a 112 pound thrust, 36 volt electric steer trolling motor. I went with this particular model as it comes in a 72 inch shaft, which is what I need for the height of my boat. Because of the way this trolling motor deploys, I had to pick up an aftermarket bracket to install my live scope transducer with the perspective mount. So this bracket here is the Cornfield Crappie Gear live scope trolling motor mount. Additionally, I chose to mount a GT54 UHD transducer to the bottom of the trolling motor, which gives me ultra high definition side view and clear view along with traditional 2D chirp. Another handy feature on this boat is the Illumitrack system, which runs on either side. And this allows me to add accessories and mounts without having to drill into the gunnels. This is nice as you can mount individual rod holders or other accessories using the Illumitrack brackets, which are provided. Given all the trolling I do, I decided to mount a pair of 36 inch tracks, which attach to the boat using the Illumitrack system. This way I can still easily remove them to access the gunnel storage when not in use. With these tracks mounted, I can run a pair of rod trees and planer board holders. These racks and accessories are made by Traxtech. So I think I've covered everything inside the boat, but I also wanted to mention how much I love this Eagle trailer. Um, so I, this boat's pretty tall. I am five foot six, but having the steps at the front here, as well as on the fender, makes it a lot easier climbing in and out of the boat and loading and unloading gear. And I get a lot of compliments about the rims on the wheels. Uh, they're pretty fancy. 
Thank you so much for checking out my walkthrough on my new boat. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And as I mentioned, this boat is for sale at the end of the season. So I'm gonna leave a link below if you wanna reach out to me with any questions. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you wanna see this boat in action, be sure to subscribe and check out some of my other videos.